Anaphylaxis Outline Introduction Common causes of anaphylaxis and allergic reactions Clinical features Diagnosis Treatment Introduction The term anaphylaxis was coined by Poitier and Richer in 1902 and literally means removal of protection. Today, anaphylaxis describes the clinical syndrome of severe hypersensitivity reaction characterized by cardiovascular collapse and respiratory compromise. Common causes of anaphylaxis and allergic reactions Penicillins and related antibiotics Aspirin Trimethoprin Sulfamethoxazole Vancomycin Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs Foods and additives Shellfish Soybeans Nuts Wheat Milk Eggs Tartrazine dyes Others Hemenoptera stings Insect parts and moids Radiographic contrast material Clinical features The symptoms associated with anaphylaxis may begin within seconds of exposure to an allergen or may be delayed up to an hour. However, the typical response usually begins within minutes of exposure and primarily involves the cardiovascular and the respiratory systems. The skin and the gastrointestinal tract are also commonly involved and widespread involvement of many organ systems may occur at the same time. Cutaneous manifestations include generalized erythema, pruritus, progressive urticaria, and angioedema. Angioedema most often involves the head, neck, face, and upper airways. Flushing, chills, and diaphoresis may occur. A vague tightening sensation in the throat and chest progressing to laryngeal and bronchial spasm, manifested as hoarseness. Strider and wheezing may progress to severe respiratory distress. Nausea, abdominal cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea are frequent complaints. Lightheadedness may be the initial manifestation of impending cardiovascular collapse with resultant tachycardia, hypertension, and typical manifestations of shock. Cardiac dysrhythmias and profound ischemia may occur, which may precipitate a myocardial infarction. Diagnosis The diagnosis of anaphylaxis is often obvious, but in early stages, the potential severity of the reaction may be underestimated. Differential diagnosis will include pulmonary embolism, acute myocardial infarction, cardiac dysrhythmias, airway obstruction, tension pneumothorax, acute asthma, hereditary angioedema, vasovagal reactions. Treatment Treatment begins with attention to the airways. A high flow of oxygen by face mask and immediate administration of epinephrine is indicated. Epinephrine 0.5 to 1 milliliters of 1 is to 1000 solution subcutaneously is indicated if there is no significant circulatory compromise. If there is no response to subcutaneous epinephrine or if there is a cardiovascular collapse, 0.5 to 1 mg, 5 to 10 milliliters of 1 is to 10,000 solution of epinephrine is given IV. If immediate venous access cannot be obtained, injection into the venous plexus at the base of the tongue may provide rapid access.
Administration of antihistamines may be beneficial. Diphenhydramine, 50 mg IV, is the most commonly utilized and may be repeated every 6 to 8 hours. Intravenous glucocorticoids, such as hydrocorticortisone, 100 mg IV stat, may prevent or lessen delayed reactions. Currently, H2 blocker therapy is also generally accepted. Injection ranitidine, 50 mg IV stat, should be given. Hyposensitive patients should be placed in a head down position or, at a minimum, have their legs elevated unless respiratory status prevents such positioning. Intravenous fluid therapy with crystalloids is preferred and is given at the rate of 20 ml per kg body weight to start with during resuscitation. Colloids produce a quicker volume expansion but are generally not used for the fear of inducing further allergic reactions to colloidal solutions. Immediate endotracheal intubation may be required but may be extremely difficult if angioedema is severe and laryngospasm is present. Sericotherotomy may be necessary to control the airway. Inhale bronchodilators such as nebulized salbutamol 0.5 ml in 3 ml normal saline can be useful in managing bronchospasm. They can be administered continuously or intermittently. Aminophylline, initial bolus of 4 to 6 mg per kg, followed by a maintenance infusion of 0.5 mg to 1 mg per minute may be required for management of severe bronchospasm. Refractory hypertension may require dopamine infusion at the rate of 10 to 20 mg per kg per minute is infused to increase the blood pressure to optimum level. Patients receiving B blockers at the time of acute anaphylaxis may fail to respond adequately epinephrine. Intravenous atropine and glucagons are useful aid to reverse circulatory shock in such patients. All patients with generalized reactions should be observed for at least 24 hours. Delayed reactions and recurrence of symptoms are possible. Patients may benefit from repeated doses of antihistamines and glucocorticoids over the next several days. Oral doses of antihistamines like phenyramine melliate 25 mg every 8 hours and oral prednisone 40 mg per kg should be given for at least 72 hours.